Right, I've been trying to decide what my task will be for this week, and I've really got a choice between two. I can either um, deal with the clutch and get the car so that it will move, um, or I can do the welding on that back panel there. Um, in order to do the clutch, um, what I've been told, and so I'm, I'm going to go with the clutch. So in order to do the clutch, what I've been told is um, it is stuck to the flywheel. Um, because I can't actually get the car on the road, what I need to do is jack up the back, run the car till it's warm, um, and then put in the clutch and slam on the brakes at the same time. Um, which hopefully will help it pop into gear and to do that a few times and eventually the clutch should free itself loose so that's the plan now in order to do that well I've got a leak in my fuel just there you can see the green bit so I've got to fix that and I'm going to have to go around and make sure the brakes work so I need to um, uh, I think I'll go and bleed them all actually just to make sure um, that they're all okay and then um, we'll look to jacking up the back and seeing if we can do that. So first step, uh, replace that uh, fuel pump and the pipes around there which are leaking. So um, we've just replaced the one pipe, made it a bit longer. We've sorted out the leak. So that seems okay now. Um, just run it for a few minutes and everything runs okay um, but oh, fumes in the garage and of course I don't really have any other way of um, getting them out apart from leaving the, wind, the door open and I really need to get the engine warmed up before I try this stuff but um, We'll see. Maybe just get it up and have a go at it. Uh, it was the way to do it. Need to, so I'd need to support it at the back, get it off, start it, and then um, slam on those brakes. Hmm. Okay. Okay, well I don't know if you can see the fumes in there, but whew. And I got a curtain up over the door at the back and still the house stinks. Now, with it up like that, I can start the engine and with difficulty, and I say with difficulty, I can actually shift it into first, second, third, fourth and see the wheels going forward. If I try to put it into reverse though, the wheels crunch like mad. So, I don't know what that means. I haven't got a clue and so I'm gonna to have to get on the internet and ask um, others um, what I need to do with that. I suspect, stroke hope, it's that my clutch isn't moving enough, the clutch pedal, you know, the cylinder, but it just feels so light still, I'm not convinced. So the general view, two things to check, uh, since the wheels appear to be turning and I appear to be able to shift gear, uh, at least forwards are, first of all, that I've fully bled the clutch system, so the slave cylinder is moving full amount. And secondly, that the transmission has fluid in it, so the gearbox. So, um, so we're going to have to lower the car down to do that and then check that it's level. Um, it's going to be fun trying to get under there because this car's low. Um, but those are the two things we're going to have to try first. So that's what we're going to look at now. Okay, so I've um, checked the fluid level in the transmission in the gearbox. And there was a huge amount of oil that came out when I um, took out the plug. So I let that drain till it was level, um, 
The car is meant to be on level when it's doing that. My only concern, I guess, is that tire is a bit flat, so um, it could have drained a little bit too much. Um, so maybe I need to pump that up and just check it again. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to work through this again. So I tried starting the car with my foot on the clutch and it in gear and it jumped forward. So that means that the clutch has not disengaged or, you know, the clutch is stuck to the flywheel. And yet when I lift the back and run it, I appear to get movement. Um, and I appear to be able to change gear at least going forwards, if not back. Um, and if I start it in neutral on the ground, I can't get it into gear. Okay, so although I can change it with difficulty when it's lifted, I can't change it at all when it's on the ground. So I think the clutch still hasn't disengaged. I'm going to <clears throat> check that over a couple of times um, make sure I've understood that right but that's where I think I am so actually I don't think I have that clutch disengaged yet so yeah okay so we're sat in the car we've got it in first gear we turn it on and we can see the wheel turning. Okay, and I can pull it out of gear. Goes back into first. Oh. I can get it in and out of first. Okay, but I can't get it into anything. <coughs> else. So I can get it in and out of first. Try to stall it. Oh, and no, I've got my foot on the clutch and it's not stalling. But it stalls when I take my foot off the clutch. Okay. So it's disengaged. Right. Now as you can see it's going through the gears there. So I think this must mean Trying to, I can get it there. That's that's got it into second. That's got it into third. So it goes into first quite easily. It goes into second a bit more difficulty. It goes into third. Oh, and there's in fourth. So, um, definitely changing gear. Uh, definitely didn't stall. And yet when I try to start it on the ground, when I try to start it on the ground, it jumped forward.
I don't know. Okay. Okay, um, we've just seen that the car doesn't stall when I slam on the brakes with my uh, clutch in, clutch pedal in. So it must be disengaging, because if I release the clutch pedal it then stalls. So I'm going to try bleeding that clutch again um, to see if that's where the issue is in that I'm not getting enough movement on it. Um, yeah, and then if that doesn't work, I think I'll try... I could try removing the slave cylinder again, putting a different push rod on, maybe one that's... Um, I have a new one. I don't know if potentially it's slightly longer than the old one or something like that. I guess that's a possibility. Anyway, so we'll start by trying to bleed it again. Okay, so I've got a... I never really see what's going on here. So I'm going to try to record it. I can see, hopefully... I've got push rod here, which hopefully I'll see move, just there. And then I've got fluid in here, and you can hopefully see that it goes up to there at the moment. So. Let's be very careful with that, then I'll touch it and I'm just going to top up the top. Oh bloody hell, just overflow on the top. So let's have a look. We're going to pump a couple of times and then see what it looks like. So I pumped four times there. Seen a bit of a reduction in fluid up here. Just top that up. And then um, is that air bubble I can see in there? No, I don't see any air bubble in there at the moment. So, based on what I have seen, that would imply we've had some bleeding, because there's no... Oh, there we go, there's a big bubble coming through there. So, that big bubble means that there's still air in the system. Which I need to get rid of still. What I don't know is if I'm pulling it back up when I'm pumping. Somehow, I might need to do this as a two-person job. So I've filled it, topped it again up here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at this video and see what it looks like right so um I did just get it into first and then back into reverse but really difficult and um, so there's still something not quite right but I think it's getting there so I'm just going to show you well that was sort of going forward
and sort of going backwards as well.